Welcome to the seashore, the massive MSC megaship with six pools, 11 restaurants, 18 bars and lounges, and a capacity of over 6,000 guests. Now while this ship is huge and has countless things to offer, knowing where to find them all can be quite the challenge, and getting lost is a legitimate concern. So whether you're still considering booking your cruise on the seashore, or have already booked and just want to know your way around, this video's got what you're looking for, as we'll take you from back to front, bottom to top, and nearly everywhere in between. Good morning, I'm Jamie and Skylar's behind the camera. Today we are taking you on a tour of the MSC Seashore. Now this is the fourth MSC tour we have filmed over the past couple of years and by now we are getting pretty familiar with these ships. Now like usual, we are gonna start at the bottom and work our way up to the top. But make sure to stick around to the end because we are gonna give you a tour of our balcony stateroom and share why we absolutely love our location on the back of the ship. So we are starting here on the back of deck five because decks four and below are staterooms only with the exception of the medical center located on deck four. Now, here on deck five, you're gonna find one of four complimentary dining rooms, as well as guest services, and a few other things we're gonna show you along the way. Guests will find the Central Park Restaurant located at the very back of Deck 5. This is the lowest and largest of the four main dining rooms with a maximum capacity of 924 people. And if you're a new cruiser to MSC, you'll have a good chance of being assigned here for your dinners. And during our cruise, this was also the only one of the main dining rooms open for breakfast in addition to the Marketplace Buffet, which we'll of course be showing you a little bit later. Just a short walk from Central Park towards the front of the ship is where you'll find the lowest level of the atrium, which is home to the future cruise Desk, the guest service desk, and the seashore bar. We found the guest service desk to be pretty chaotic when we first got on the ship, but generally quite slow early in the mornings. The seashore bar, meanwhile, was almost always a popular place to be, especially in the evenings when there was entertainment in the atrium. Now that we've shown you the rear of Deck 5, it's time to see what we can find towards the middle of the ship. It's at this section of Deck 5 where you'll find the MSC Foundation, a place devoted to raising awareness of and protecting the seas. It's also here that you'll find the lowest portion of the 36-foot high Vanini sculpture, which includes 190 hand-blown glass fish that span upwards through three decks of the ship. And just a few steps from the sculpture, you can also find the hub. Now the hub is where you can get assistance with your internet packages, purchase our wristband, and also look at your photos. If you do purchase a wristband, you can use that as your cruise card and you don't have to carry it around with you. Now since the front of Deck 5 consists almost entirely of staterooms, it's time to head one floor up to Deck 6. Located at the far front of Deck 6 is the lower level of the Madison Theater, which is where you'll find the handicap accessible entrance. But since the majority of guests will enter the theater on Deck 7, we'll wait until we're one floor up to show you more of it. Now on Deck 6, you'll find the Times Square area, and that's going to include a ton of shops, a place for live music, and one of my favorites, the Chocolate Bar. You're also going to find another complimentary restaurant and the Shine Bar. Now one of the more recognizable features of the seashore has to be the stage in Times Square, with this LED wall spanning nearly 30 feet upwards and featuring a projection of the famous Manhattan skyline. Here you'll find plenty of seating to catch one of the evening musical performances, which often includes dueling pianos. During our cruise, these were probably the best live performers on the ship and they sure did know how to get the crowd into it. Now surrounding Times Square you'll find six different shops including the fine watches store, the accessory store, the boutique, the perfume and cosmetic store, the duty free store, and the Vinci 1878 chocolate bar. It's here that you can find a variety of ice creams, a bar serving coffee and alcoholic drinks, and of course a huge selection of chocolates. Now we know these chocolates are really good because when we stayed in the yacht club on the seascape, our butler would often leave us chocolate treats in the afternoons, and also we could go to the yacht club lounge in the evenings for even more chocolate. Now that you know where to find the spot for sweets, it's time to show you what you can find towards the back of deck six. Just a short walk from Venchi, you'll reach the Deck 6 Atrium, another great spot to enjoy some live music in the evenings. But before you do that, you may want to grab a drink. Unfortunately, the Shine Bar is right off of the atrium. Right next to the Shine Bar is where we embarked on the seashore during our cruise, and right next to that, you'll also find the Excursions Desk. Just a few steps from the atrium area towards the back of Deck 6 is where you'll find the second of the four main dining rooms on the ship at Tribeca. Located directly above the Central Park restaurant and seating 628 people, Tribeca is the second largest dining room and is where we dined on the first night of our cruise. 
to see much more of that dining experience, as well as an in-depth review of the rest of our dining on the seashore, be sure to check out our MSC Dining episode after this one. Now, if you book a Bella or a Fantastica experience, you can be assigned to one of three complimentary dining rooms, including the Central Park restaurant, one deck below us, the Tribeca restaurant, which we're at right now, or the Fifth Avenue restaurant located one deck above. With seating for 279 people, we found the Fifth Avenue restaurant to be much smaller and provide a more intimate setting when compared to the dining rooms below it on decks five and six. Right next to the 5th Avenue restaurant, you can find two of the best photo ops on the seashore in this lit up glass tunnel and hot air balloon at the Boulevard du Cabaret. Now if you're a regular on this channel, by this point you may be experiencing some major deja vu, and that's because this ship is nearly identical to the last ship we sailed on just a few months back, the MSC Seascape. And when we say identical, we mean identical. The only real difference that we could find between the two ships is that the Seascape has the Robotron towards the rear of Deck 20, whereas the same spot on the seashore basically just has some empty space. So if you've already sailed on one of these ships and are looking for a new ship experience, we probably wouldn't recommend sailing on the other. But if you've sailed on one of these ships and absolutely loved it, then you'll likely enjoy the other one just as much. Now getting back to the seashore, guess we'll find the last of the four main dining rooms at the Manhattan Restaurant just off of the Boulevard du Cabaret. With seating for just 192 and reserved for area level guests only, this restaurant offers anytime dining and is the smallest and most exclusive of the four main dining rooms. Right next door at the very back of Deck 7 is where you'll find Le Cabaret Rouge, the two-story French-inspired lounge with seating for 400. Here you can grab a drink from the bar and enjoy one of a variety of evening acts including nightly live music. And if you're looking for a quiet spot to relax with a view, you'll find just that at Le Cabaret Rouge during the daytime. Now that we've shown you what you can find on the rear of Deck 7, we will continue on towards the casino and the theater. As you make your way towards the middle of Deck 7, you'll pass by the watches and sunglasses shop on your way to the Champagne Bar, which is where you'll find a variety of champagnes by the glass, champagne cocktails, and fresh shellfish. Just a few steps from the Champagne Bar is where you'll find the spacious 12,000 square foot MSC Signature Casino, which includes 182 slot machines, 12 table games, and of course, the Casino Bar and its 9.5 foot tall Statue of Liberty. If you make your way through the casino to the very front of the ship, you'll find the Deck 7 entrance to the enormous Madison Theater. The theater offers nearly 12,400 square foot of space and seating for around 1,200 people and is where you can catch an evening show. During our cruise, we dropped in to check out Rock Royalty and we were pretty impressed with the show, especially the visuals. Now there is a lot to show you here on Deck 8, including the spa, the gym, more shops and bars, all the specialty restaurants, and even a pool. Now let's start with the spa. Now we had toured the spa area on our first day, so we're going to show you that footage now. While the thermal spa on the seashore certainly does have a lot to offer, like most of this ship, we found it to be pretty much identical to the spa on the seascape. And since access to the spa came included with our yacht club booking on the seascape, we were actually able to get the full spa experience on that ship. So while we are able to give you a quick glimpse of the thermal spa here on the seashore, if you want to get the more in-depth thermal spa experience, be sure to check out our Seascape Yacht Club episode after this one. Now right across the hall from the MSC Spa is where you'll find the MSC Gym, which has everything you'd expect from a modern cruise ship gym, including weight machines, cardio machines, free weights, a yoga room, and a cycling room. Now if you unfortunately have to be doing business while on your seashore cruise, you can find the business center just steps from the MSC gym. Now if you're less about doing business and more about having fun, you'll find a great spot for that just a short walk away at the sports bar. It's here that you'll find slot machines, a massive oval bar, the best selection of beer on the entire ship, and of course, lots of TVs to enjoy the big game. Now if you venture outside from the sports bar, you'll find one of two infinity whirlpools on the ship, each of which can hold up to 20 people and normally offer some really great views. 
Just on the other side of the ship from the sports bar is the Brooklyn Cafe, which is where you'll find some of the most unique decor of any bar on a cruise ship and one of our personal favorite spots to grab a cocktail or a coffee. And while we show you a little more of this bar, we should mention that you can find the Seashore's other infinity hot tub just outside this door. Now back inside on deck 8 as you head towards the back of the ship, you'll pass by the fine jewelry store, a great spot to do some window shopping. Just past the jewelry store, you'll pass by the MSC excursion desk on the way to the place to get all your MSC gear and souvenirs, the MSC shop. Now if you head outside to the waterfront on either side of the ship, you'll find one of our favorite staples of the newer MSC ships, the Infinity Bridges. These glass floor bridges provide guests with views not only off the sides of the ship, but also straight down below. As you make your way back inside near the middle of Deck 8, you'll find your spot on the seashore for Mexican food and margaritas at Ola Tacos and Cantina. Right outside of Ola Cantina on Deck 8, guests will find the top level of the Seashore Atrium, where you'll have a great view of the activities down on the fifth floor below, as well as all three flights of the Swarovski Crystal Staircases. Just off the atrium towards the rear of the ship, guests will find Chef's Court, which is home to a wine cellar, a cocktail bar, and four of the Seashore's five specialty restaurants. Now speaking of the wine cellar, it does look really nice, but we're still not sure if you can actually purchase wine here, as we've never found anyone in it during our cruise on the seashore or the seascape. Just a few steps from the wine cellar is where you'll find the Butcher's Cut, the spot on the seashore for steak lovers, and perhaps the best looking restaurant on the ship. Now we do have two specialty restaurants booked for this cruise, including one right here in the Butcher's Cut. So if you're interested in seeing that experience, we'll be sharing that in our next episode. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. Before we show you our next Chef's Court spot, we do want to mention that Butcher's Cut does also offer outdoor dining, although it is often quite windy on the sides of the ship. Just outside of the Butcher's Cut is where you can find the Cocktail Bar, which has arguably the best selection of cocktails on the ship, many of which can only be found at this bar. Right next to the cocktail bar is Kaido Teppanyaki, a Japanese-style hibachi restaurant which we were also fortunate enough to experience during our cruise on the seashore. And as you probably guessed, we'll be sharing more of that in our MSC dining episode. Right around the corner from Kaido Teppanyaki is the Kaido Sushi Bar, your spot on the seashore for noodles, soups, teriyaki, tempura, and of course, sushi, which travels through the restaurant on a conveyor belt. Now, if you just want to sample a piece or two, you can purchase your rolls individually, but from our experience, they also offer an all-you-can-eat option at least one night of each cruise. The final Chef's Court restaurant can be found just past Kaido Sushi Bar. It's here that seafood lovers will find their specialty dining spot at the Ocean K restaurant. With seating for 62, this is one of the smaller specialty restaurants, and while we didn't get a chance to eat here, the reviews we've heard have been great. If you continue to make your way to the far back of Deck 8, you'll find another of the Seashore's 12 bars and lounges at the Uptown Lounge. This lounge offers a well-stocked bar, a stage for live entertainment, and lots of comfortable seating. But even though this lounge will seat up to 120, you'll still have to show up early to find a spot here on karaoke nights. Now for this next area of the ship, you're going to need your sunglasses. Back outside at the very rear of Deck 8 is where you'll find the Infinity Pool Deck, which offers great spots to take in the views from this viewpoint or from one of the loungers at the Infinity Pool. Speaking of the Infinity Pool, we found this to be one of the best spots on the ship to relax, as it's accessible to adults only and was rarely very busy on our cruise. In addition to the pool, the Infinity Pool Deck is also where you'll find the Infinity Bar, a great place to grab a drink and enjoy the sunset. And if you're less into drinks and more into sweets, the Vinci 1878 Gelato Shop can be found on this pool deck as well. Now that wraps up the tour for the lower half of the ship, but we still have so much more to show you. Now decks 9 through 15 are staterooms only, so we'll see you up on deck 16. As we make our way up to Deck 16, we want to hear from you. Have you booked a cruise or are you considering booking a cruise on the seashore? If so, let us know when you're cruising and what you're looking forward to most about the seashore in the comments. Deck 16. Now up here on the back of Deck 16 is where you'll find one of MSC's signature features, which is this bridge of size. On this deck, you're also going to find more bars, the buffet, and also a pool. 
The back of deck 16 is composed almost entirely of the Marketplace Buffet, which is where we're going to be taking you shortly. Along the way, we'll drop by the Sky Bar, but first, we gotta show you a couple more of those views from the Bridge of Size. Just steps from the Bridge of Size, you can find more epic views and some great drinks at the Sky Bar. And we should mention that like almost every other bar on the seashore, it does have an espresso machine. Now unless you've booked in the Yacht Club, you'll likely be eating most of your breakfasts and lunches at the Marketplace Buffet, and we ate most of our breakfasts and lunches here during our cruise on the seashore. As expected, we found the layout of the buffet on this ship to be similar to the Marketplace Buffet on the other MSC ships we've sailed on, but we gotta say that the quality of the buffet food on this ship was different from each of our other MSC cruises. To find out whether this was the best main buffet experience or the worst main buffet experience we've had with MSC, be sure to check out our MSC Dining episode where we'll discuss the quality of food in the main buffet, the main dining room, and in the signature restaurants while also going into much more detail on what can be found in each. As you make your way out of the Marketplace Buffet on Deck 16, you'll reach the Jungle Lounge area which has a retractable roof and occupies two decks near the middle of the ship. On the lower level of the lounge is where you'll find the Jungle Pool and Hot Tubs and this guy. And just a few steps from the pool, you'll find the Jungle Pool Bar, which offers even more gelato, fresh orange juice, and of course, lots of liquor. Now we'll take you to the upper level of the Jungle Lounge area shortly, but first, we're going to show you what you'll find at the very front of Deck 16. Now, on the front of Deck 16 is where the Yacht Club starts. It actually encompasses this whole area of the ship here. Now, unfortunately, we are not gonna be able to get to tour it today because we did not book in the Yacht Club. But the good thing is, when we stayed on the Seascape, we did book in the Yacht Club, and we have found these two ships to be almost identical. So if you are at all interested in booking the Yacht Club on the seashore or the Seascape, we would recommend checking out our tour video of the Seascape or our Yacht Club episode after this one. In that, you're gonna get to see a tour of our room, you'll see the top sail lounge, the special dining room for Yacht Club members, as well as the exclusive pool deck. Now let's head up to deck 18. Now just like deck 16, the front of deck 18 consists almost entirely of the Yacht Club, and for that reason, we'll be picking back up in the Jungle Pool Lounge. Here on the second level of the Jungle Pool area, you'll find the entrance to the Kids Club, as well as several table games, including shuffleboard, pool, foosball, and ping pong. As you make your way towards the rear of Deck 18 from the Jungle Pool Lounge, you'll come across the Hall of Games. In addition to some really cool neon lighting, you'll also find nearly 3,500 square foot of arcade games, including some high-tech options such as virtual reality rafting and racing, and a few classics such as air hockey, pinball, and the claw machine. Right outside of the Hall of Games is another of the seashore's most popular spots among kids, the Pirate's Cove Aqua Park. This 10,000 square foot water park on the sea extends three decks upwards and offers a variety of activities for kids of all ages. And while the ship's four main water slides are definitely fun for adults too, they were always quite busy, as this cruise was full of kids. So if you want to see more of the water slide experience, we'd recommend hopping over to our Seascape tour video after this one. Now if you're looking for a great photo op while on the seashore, you can find one of my favorite spots to snap a picture on Deck 18 with these Lego girls. As you continue towards the far back of Deck 18, you'll reach the Long Island Pool area, which is normally one of the busiest spots on MSC ships. But since the weather on our cruise was rather cool and windy, the pool itself was never too busy. But the activities on the stage right next to the pool were always quite popular and entertaining, especially the white party, which is at a great turnout on each of our MSC cruises. Right next to the Long Island Pool and Stage, you can also find the Long Island Bar, yet another great spot to grab gelato or a drink to enjoy poolside. Now that you've seen what Deck 18 has to offer, it's time to head another deck up. Right above the Long Island Bar, you'll find the Horizon Bar on Deck 19, which offers beers, frozen cocktails, fresh orange juice, and espresso drinks, along with comfortable seating and great views of the pool deck down below. As you make your way towards the front of Deck 19, you'll pass through the second level of the Adventure Trail Aqua Park, which is where we found some of the best views on the seashore off the side of the ship. 
There are two hot tubs on the side of this deck in addition to the hot tubs at the Long Island pool. Now the rest of this deck is for array guests only, so we're not gonna be able to show that to you today. But if you wanna see what it looks like, we would recommend checking out our MSE Seascape tour. Now we've got one more deck to show you and then we'll give you a tour of our room. So this is the busiest we have ever seen a sports court on a cruise ship because not only can you play basketball and soccer, but now you can play pickleball. Now other than the sports court, you're not going to find a whole lot clear up on deck 20 unless you've booked in the yacht club, which has the yacht club pool, grill and bar, and sun deck at the front of the ship. But here towards the middle of the ship, non-yacht club guests can find the top level of the adventure trail, as well as perhaps the best views of the islands and the ship, especially at night during the parties. Now that we've shown you nearly everything the seashore has to offer, it's time to head down to deck 14 for the tour of our balcony stateroom. Welcome to room 14278, a balcony stateroom located on the very back of the MSC Seashore. Now like all the other rooms we've stayed in on MSC ships, as soon as you enter the room, you'll find the light switches as well as the switches to communicate with your room attendant. We do want to point out that you do need a key card in this little area here in order for your lights and outlets to work. Next you will find the bathroom. Now this one is much smaller compared to the last one we stayed in in the yacht club, but it still does have a couple shelves as well as a cabinet, which we're not going to open because we've got all of our stuff shoved in there in order to make it look decent for this video. We do want to mention that this is one of the smaller showers that we've experienced on a cruise ship. Even I felt it was a little bit cramped, but it did at least have a handheld shower head, a grab bar, and a foot bar. Now outside of the bathroom, you will find the thermostat and I can confirm that it kept our room very cold during this day. And then around the corner is the closet. Now this is quite cramped to get to, but once you get it opened up, it actually has a lot of space. On this side, there are several deep shelves and drawers, which as you can see, we did not come close to filling them up. This is also where you'll find the safe. On the other side, we've got 12 different hangers as well as some additional shelving. Now about a foot away from the closet is the bed. We found the mattress to be quite firm and Skylar and I really enjoyed sleeping on it. Now on either side of the bed, you will find nightstands with cubbies. You'll also find room light switches as well as accent lights and a reading light. We do wanna mention that only one side of the bed has a USB charger. So if you are sharing the room and both of you would like to access your phone while charging in the bed, we would recommend bringing along a battery bank. We particularly like this one because it does plug right into the wall to charge and it comes with a built-in cord. So if you're interested in grabbing one of these for your next cruise vacation, then we'd recommend checking out our Amazon link in the video description. Now at the foot of this bed is where you'll find the biggest cruise ship mirror we've had in a stateroom yet. Now on the other side of the room, you'll find a good sized sofa across from the TV and the nice desk area with cubbies, shelves, more drawers, and a stowaway seat. This is also where you'll find the mini fridge. And for some reason on this sailing, ours is completely empty. So we've been able to store our drinks and snacks from the buffet in it. The desk area is also where you'll find most of the outlets in the room. Now we have mentioned this in prior tours. There might only be two American outlets in the entire room. So if you're like us and you need to charge a bunch of devices, we would recommend maybe bringing along something like this to make the international ports usable. So if you're interested in something like this, we'll make sure to leave an Amazon link to it in the video description as well. But we also wanna point out a cool feature that we have not seen on any of our other MSC cruises, and that is a wireless charger built right into the desk. This has really helped us keep our phones charged. Now the last feature that we're gonna highlight about the actual room itself is this balcony. And today we have a gorgeous view of Ocean K. And speaking of the beautiful Ocean K, if you're lucky enough to have your MSC cruise visit here, we'd highly recommend exploring it. While we only had a few hours to enjoy one of our favorite islands, it was enough time for me to win a beach limbo contest she is the winner! <laughs> and for Skylar to win an epic tug of war battle. Now getting back to our stateroom, another thing we absolutely loved about it was its location at the far back of the ship, right next to the infinity elevators. Not only are these by far the most scenic elevators on the ship, but we found them to typically not be very busy. Plus, they'll drop you off right by the infinity pool and specialty restaurants on deck 8 and at the rear of the marketplace buffet on deck 16. And if you're at all like us, then one of the main reasons you go on cruises is for the food. And you can see a whole lot more of our MSC dining experience by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.